I'd like to talk a little bit about thermodynamics. The name thermodynamics or the heat movement really is a story. We really want to think of it as the story of the transfer of energy or heat between system and surrounding. And it's an energy it's a story that I like to tell because thermodynamics is just so easy to sort of grasp when it comes to pictures and concepts and balls bouncing around. Not so much like quantum mechanics where you have Heidegger's uncertainty or you have Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, wave functions, psi values, things get real wacky down there at the molecular or atomic level. But thermodynamics, it's a nice story. And we want to think of it's a story that is where I guess you might say that couple over there walking down the street, well, they don't add up to much. It's a story of things that don't add up to much. In fact, it's so little, it's a story of a nothing. Because one of the main laws for thermodynamics, the first law, in fact, is that, well, you know it, energy is neither created nor destroyed. Energy is conserved. So the way we can kind of think of this is, Whatever the two systems were, two objects that have some transfer of energy between them, we'll call it the system and the surrounding. We could say this, that if this lost 10, 10 kilojoules of energy some way, somehow, we'll get into the story of how it can lose energy, but if this system could lose 10 kilojoules, well, it's a story of, about, a story of nothing. Thermodynamics is a story of zero. <laughs> no change, because we can't lose energy. Well, we know what the surrounding would gain then, because it has to be equal and opposite to this value here. So we know it would be 10 kilojoules would be gained by the surrounding, because it lost 10, 10 kilojoules from the system. If we're looking from the system's perspective, he lost the surrounding gained. And so we write that as, the change in energy of the system plus the change in energy of the surrounding, guess what it equals? That's right, big fat zero. But zero is powerful because we can then take this to the other side and say the change in energy of the system is equal to the negative change of the energy of the surrounding. You say, well, I, you've already lost me. I hope I haven't. Remember we just said 10 kilojoules kind of was our currency. We lost that from the system. So we could say the system's change in energy would be minus 10 kilojoules. Remember we said the surrounding would gain 10 kilojoules. So we could put 10 kilojoules in over here, have a negative in front of it, and guess what? Negative 10 kilojoules equals negative 10 kilojoules. This is a very powerful equation. Two ways. I want to show how it can be used classically from from the esteemed halls of the universities one of the classic experiments not classical although maybe I guess it could be both the classic experiment is to take two styrofoam cups maybe you've seen this where you make a calorimeter so this is my small styrofoam cup stacked within itself and we throw in the thermometer and we say this that that calorimeter is going to have added to it some hot water and we'll say 50 grams exactly of hot water 50 grams weighed out hot and that energy from the hot water we're going to transfer not only to the calorimeter but we use so we're going to have this is our transfer we're going to say that hot water goes to the calorimeter plus it goes to 50 grams of a cold water. That heat also goes to the cold water. So we know this. The heat lost by the hot water has to be equal to the heat gained by the cold water that's in the calorimeter. And usually they set it up. I believe this is the way they do it. The cold water goes in the calorimeter. You heat up the hot water and you pour it in and you cap it real fast and see the temperature change. The principle there though really still is that the heat lost 
from the hot water is equal and opposite to the heat gained. by the two, the water, the cold water, and the calorimeter. Nothing created, nothing destroyed. You can do a lot then with this first law of thermodynamics. One other little classic not experiment done in the lab at a university, but just at home, having fun. Golly, science is supposed to just be wonderful stories. So you've maybe done this at home, maybe not. And you don't have an Ormeyer flask maybe at home. So, but maybe something like a Coke bottle. So, and we have a balloon here. My balloon. And we have, just think of that as a Coke bottle. Or Dr. Pepper if you're in Texas or whatever. So we could say, hey, let's put vinegar. We'll use a vinegar in the bottom and we'll have baking soda in the balloon tipped over leaning over and of course we tip that up and the foaming action starts and we get CO2 generated and at the end when it's all done our balloon has all that CO2 bouncing around in it above the vinegar and we've done work to push in that one atmosphere pressure, the atmosphere we live under, to expand that balloon. It did work on the atmosphere, around it. We might even have a little bit of heat. So my squiggly lines here are heat. And my straight lines here, the curve here, are work. So we do work and we do heat. From this chemical reaction. But I know this, first law still is in control that the energy change within this system, talking about the balloon and the Erlenmeyer flask being our system, is equal and opposite, taking that to the energy change of the surrounding. You say, well, this is a little bit easier to understand. Well, that's from college. This is from tabletops and homes. It doesn't really matter. Still, the same principles apply. We had a hot source. We didn't have any work here that transferred its heat to the cold water and lost some of it to the calorimeter. And we set those equal. We were just dealing with heat. Here, we have a little bit more complexity because we have heat and work. But regardless, this system, what's inside of the Dr. Pepper bottle or coke bottle and the balloon is the chemicals those stay inside it's a closed system and the surrounding is the table the atmosphere around this balloon and bottle so what we have to think about then is the surroundings change in energy where did it get its energy it didn't get any of these chemicals they're kept from the surrounding but it had work on it and heat to it. So think of when we start expanding these two sides, we're going to leave this one in terms of the system because uh, you know, I guess thermodynamics it's uh, all about equal, equaling zero because of the first law. And when we have these systems surrounding, the system surrounding talk, we tend to be a little bit selfish I guess or self-centered or system-centered. We'd like to think of everything in terms of the system. So we want to get rid of this term surrounding. Can we define the change in energy of the surrounding in terms of the system? And I think we can because heat flows. Heat in fact the definition is the flow talking about transfer of energy, thermo uh, motions from one system to another. So whatever was gained by the surrounding that same amount of heat has to be lost by the system because that's where it came from. In the same way, any work done on the surrounding had to be energy done, like I said, work done by the system. Work on the surrounding work is that, that is that same amount of work done by the system. So we're looking at the surrounding work on the surrounding heat to the surrounding, but we can change that in terms of system. So let's keep the left side the same because we 
have it in terms of system. But we can say really the change in energy of the surrounding is not due to some chemicals coming out to it. It's due, and this is in any, in any case, and even in reactions that are in the lab that are open to the system, we still have very little concern for evaporation of chemicals or whatever. We typically are worried more about the work on the surrounding and the heat to the surrounding. Then we are loss of chemicals in the reaction solution to the surrounding. So this really still works even in an open system. So we say, okay, the negative then of, we're going to say work, I'm going to put uh, in terms of, this is going to get a little complicated. The, we're going to go ahead and let's put Q in there first. So minus Q for the surrounding, I'm going to leave it there in terms of energy gained by the surrounding, heat gained by the surrounding, so that's still in terms of the surrounding. And work, we're going to say plus P delta V. Now here, I'm going to switch to system. I'm going to do that a little earlier. Now let's think about the work of the system, uh, work on the surrounding. Energy transferred through work to the surrounding. We would have to have the system expand because that means all those molecules of air that were being bombarded on the outside of the balloon when the balloon was expanding they got pushed back and their speed increased as they bounced away from this expanding balloon. The air around it in the atmosphere is getting hotter. So when the system expands, delta V, where we have V final is bigger than V initial, this will be positive. Of course pressure is positive. So the work term for this surrounding fits P delta V of the system. It fits because it would be an increase in energy of the surrounding if we just take Q gained by the surrounding, Q heat for the surrounding, plus P delta V of the system, delta V of the system, that would be heat done on the surrounding and it would be positive so that would be an increase. Okay, we have one last term that we need to switch out. So let's jump over to this side and say, okay, I've got delta E equals minus, let's say, well, Q, I know if we have heat to the surrounding, it came from the system, so we can just say Q surrounding is equal to negative Q of the system. Okay, you say, I'm already lost. Five kilojoules of heat gained by the surrounding. Five kilojoules. How much heat was lost by the system? I can't hear you. Five kilojoules of heat was gained by the surrounding. How much heat was lost by the system? Heat's got to be transferred, so it was minus five. Minus five kilojoules lost. So guess what? Minus five times minus is plus. So we don't change that value. It's still minus five, negative times minus five, would be five. So minus Q of the system is equal to Q of the surrounding. I hope I've convinced you of that and we can move on. Again, I guess I'm not worried about this negative. I'm saying the negative of negative five is positive five. So that's equal to the heat gained by the surrounding. We are now putting everything in terms of the system. So let's take out all the, the uh, brackets here. We can say, um, parentheses, sorry, or sorry, um, brackets. We can say we have energy of the system is equal to Q of the system minus P delta V of the system. Not negative times negative equals positive. Negative times a positive equals negative. Voila, that's a classic equation from your college textbooks used to determine the ch energy change of a system internal energy change of a system by looking at heat lost by the system and work done by the system. All that derived from the first law of thermodynamics. Bye bye.